Welcome back to my healing rooms. Today I'm with one of my favorite people, Jacqueline Lapis-Sussman. Jacqueline's a psychotherapist, lectures worldwide, and is one of the foremost practitioners of eidetic image psychology. And it works. It's not like regular therapy where the energy keeps circulating. It helps to change your perspective and beliefs, allowing you to access your loved ones, your wholeness, mind, body, and soul. It creates shifts and is deeply healing. Jacqueline is an author of two books, Images of Desire and Freedom from Failure, and publishes articles monthly in Total Health Magazine. Please join us. Welcome, Jackie. Nice to be here, Barbara. What I love about eidetic image psychology is that it addresses the mind, body, and spirit. Right. Can you explain it to us, and how does it work? Okay. Eidetic image psychology is the study of images stored in the mind of all of our life experience. From the time that we're born, everything that happens to us in our relationship with our mother, our fathers, their relationship to each other, our siblings, and later people in our lives, traumas, get stored as imprints in the mind. They're literally films. This has been researched in universities all over the world. It dates back to the ancient pre-Socratic Greeks. Uh, it's studied and used in sports psychology and healing, all, all manner of things. So when a person has a certain image in their mind of a precise relationship, let's say their parents separated and got divorced and there was a lot of tension, so they'll close their eyes and see the image of their parents and the tension that's there, that because mind and body are one continuous flow of neural and chemical signals, the image of their parents, the fighting lives in them. And so they will have feelings of discord inside of them. So a person might come in and say, you know, I, I have this split inside me, or I'm always tense or anxious, and they don't know where it's originating from. So we go back and we find the precise images of which things happen in their life that is connected to that symptom. So the image, the life event, influences our thoughts and our feelings and attitudes. Like if our parents didn't get along, we might think we can't ever get a relationship. People don't get along. We don't feel, we feel that split inside. So it's an actual physical feeling and there's chemicals that go along with that. So you lead people through images that reveal to you and them what they're suppressing or carrying? When people come in, they'll come in and they'll tell me their symptoms, anxiety, depression, I'm having trouble with my child, I can't get along with them, um, I have OCD, I'm having trouble, I can't get a job, I seem to fail at everything, whatever the symptom is, and there may be a whole list of symptoms. All of those symptoms originate from somewhere and they're a mystery to people. Where does the symptom come from? How come I can't get a boyfriend? Or how come I can't find a guy? Or why am I depressed all the time? You know, I've tried this, I've tried that. They can't figure out the source of it. So what this does is it studies the imprints in the mind. It goes way beyond language. There are movies in the mind of precise life experiences that are the root cause of the symptoms. We find those right. through a testing method. Okay, so there's a testing method that shows you the, is suppression involved? Is suppre Absolutely, so what happens is that a, usually a symptom of any kind, the origin is in the suppression of their power and expression in the psyche. So the experience of power and expression is somewhere stored inside them too. And so we find, first we find the exact uh, origin of the symptom, and it could be one thing or two things or three things, because it could be something rooted in a relationship with their mother and then a later trauma or something that happens to them. So those three things together form in the mind and a symptom happens, or an illness that they're struggling with. So can you change chemical reactions in the body through Absolutely. these images? Absolutely, yes, because the first thing that we do is we get the history of images, the layer. It's like the 
the map through which you're, or the screen through which you're operating with life, it's the, pe the program. Right. We have programs from the moment that we're born. There are these patterns, there are life scripts. We keep living them out, living them out, living them out, and suffering with them. But right next to them in the psyche, and this is based on research and the latest um, research on the brain, which is brain is a hologram. So we're stuck on this part of the hologram, but right next to it are images of who we really are. So our expression, our radiance, what did we want to say in that situation? What did we want to do? Did we have anger we didn't express? Is there um, something we didn't say? Is there some action we wanted to take in that moment, but we couldn't? So suppression creates a numerous symptoms, but the power and radiance of the true self is always in the person. And so what we do, it's like a um, archeological dig that's like, uplifting or finding something very sacred, which is the wholeness of the person. And Coming it, back to the, the original wholeness of, yes. of that soul before it experienced things that... In this lifetime. In, in this lifetime. So, we don't deal with past lives? <laughs> no, we don't deal with past lives because, uh, you know, I this isn't part of eidetic theory, but I really feel that if there is such a thing as past lives, whatever those patterns are, we're, we're playing them out here. Right here. It's all happening right here. Okay. Wholeness is inside, so it's much like a tree, this fabulous oak tree, and you it's got this little seed, it starts with a little seed that has all this potential to be this fabulous oak tree, but a little acid rain comes, and a little forest fire comes, which is maybe our father was an alcoholic, or maybe our mother was depressed, and we're living in that atmosphere, or maybe they had tension between them, or maybe kids made fun of you because you were fat in high school, or you a million things, all the pain that happens to us. This is what inhibits us. So that acid rain, the tree can't quite grow into its full beauty. So we come and we give it good water, we feed it well, which is working with the images, and then the leaves begin to grow again. It comes back to its radiance. And so we see that over and over. And once people connect to their true power, their light, their expression, the greatness of their love, whatever it may be, anger, whatever it is, symptoms go away. Now I know that the inversion is a big part of this mm -hmm. eidetic image psychology. Can you talk about that? Sure. Now it's very interesting because I get a lot of people who come in with a specific symptom that where they say, I just can't succeed. I seem to sabotage myself, whatever I do. I can't get my energy out fully in some area of life. And if I check their images, and I would ask them, like, like maybe I'll use you as a demo, would that be okay? Absolutely. If I ask you, see, and perhaps people watching this could try this too, um, close your eyes, see an image in your mind's eye, just let it come of your parents standing directly in front of you, facing you. So they're facing you. As you put your right hand out, is that your mother or your father? And uh, who's on your right, who's on your left? My father's on my right. Okay. Okay, so you... It's switched. It's switched, okay. So usually for most people, the right position and there's no right or wrong, of course, but mother's on the right biologically, genetically, mother appears on the right and father on the left. Now can this go back and forth? So if it then? shifts, if, if a person finds father, mother on the left, father on the right, right, they have what's called an inversion. So one parent dominated their mental space more than the other. And it's like they're operating on one battery. And the symptom for that is they can't, they're obstructed in some way. So they, you have to work to shift them so that the battery, the power of the parent that they're not as connected to or the parent who's less, like one parent just takes over. They were dominating or another parent died so one takes over, whatever happened. The power of the parent that's less strong needs to come forward and then the person relaxes. And does this go back and forth during therapy? Like, can you switch it? It can be. It can, so that's not like uncommon? A, no. Sometimes a person will have it switch and they feel so much better and whatever was obstructing them is over with. 
and then something may trigger something that they go back but it's usually a deeper level being worked out and then you get it back the reason mothers on the right and fathers on the left is because when babies are born the bio babies hear the heartbeat in the womb so when the baby's born and mommy nurses it on one side or holds it and bottle feeds it the biological signals are for mother to hold the child on uh, you know on both sides to nurse whether you nurse or not the biological signals are still there So when a mother's holding a baby on this side, the right side of the ear is against the mother's heart. So all the research showed the first images a mother gets stored on the right hemisphere where the heart sound is stronger. So if the mother's not on the right, that indicates? If mother's on the left, it indicates there's an inversion. Right. And it indicates that one parent took over the mental, emotional space of that person as a child person cannot get to the power and energy of the other parent inside them because we carry right. we're genetically our parents and so they will suffer from they can't get out of their way they sabotage themselves in some way and there's an internal tension and when you switch that it's it's done and they feel great well I know personally um, that I worked with you and what happened was it um, completely healed the relationship right. with my dad and the perspective I saw him differently. Can you right. talk about that? Right. Absolutely. Because as I said, mind is a hologram. So we get fixated on one perspective and we live that forever. For example, I had a woman who was working in a group with me and uh, she said, God, my mother was such a witch and she was mean and she was rigid and I just didn't like her at all. We did some images and she saw her mother during a certain time when she went into puberty, sweet and present. The inversion which I just described is really important. Uh, It's just one of the many diagnostic tools and understandings that we have in eidetics. Somebody will go into therapy and talk and talk for a long time, have the inversion, but no one knows that you have to switch them and the person relaxes and their power comes in because you're dealing right with consciousness. You're dealing right with the imprints in the brain. Right, because you're not You just bypass talking. the rational mind because the rational mind knows zero. You're dealing with memory, memory, memory. Like that woman would have thought, oh, my mother's a witch for the rest of her life, never felt her feminine power, never had a relationship, never connected with the total truth. That happens, we fixate as we get narrow. Well, to me, it was like a a veil was lifted, and I saw him, and he is incredible. I didn't see him through the lens of my story or him being my father. He's this powerful, amazing man, and I can really appreciate him and also take it in. That's what you're saying, right? Right. I I just remember you started with, if I may share, you started with him being almost looking reptilian or something. Do you remember that in your image? Yeah. Which showed that there was a damage in the connection between you, and that had an impact on your life. But then as we moved away from that imprint, how you were holding it, not any fault of your own. It's just the way it happened as a child. That's the image. No, it was the impact. His fault. <laughs> right, exactly. But so as we looked in the hologram and started to work with the images, it's like other oh, information. It comes it's almost like it comes up from some underground place or it gets downloaded from some other place. And you're seeing other aspects of him and you started to remember, Oh, right, I did this with him or that or he was loving here, or he was loving there different things come in and then the image starts to shift and you see who he really is. And once you see that, that um, wholeness in your father, rather than being stuck on that limitation, when you see his wholeness, you're actually living it within you because that's the image stored in your mind. So it gives you much better feelings of self and you have different chemicals from your brain because that image is taking over. So it's endorphins and happy chemicals. We like those. We like those, we go for those. Now, these images you also give your your patients, they can use during the day. I mean, if someone's feeling anxious. Right. What kind of, how how do the images come into play? 
All right, so uh, people can get homework. Um, there's a whole, th this work is so deep. And Dr. Austin spent so many years developing, he wrote 40 books on it, treating all, all kinds of symptoms. So for, for example, anxiety states, what he discovered is that when, you, when a person gets anxious, there's actually heated neural chemicals and signals going back, neural signals going back of anxiety and agitation. There's actually heat in the brain. And feeling good, you're in a state of slow potentials in the brain. You know, like they're signaling, like waving back and forth in a calm way. And so you have that download of chemicals. So he wrote a whole book on it and discovered the healing of hot and cold mental images. So there are images that cool, literally cool the brain down. For example? So for example, you're agitated, you're all upset, um, worried, and you see a, a, a big ice cube block on your head. And you're sitting there and you feel it get cold and your brain gets cold, 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 cold. And the person starts to chill out, literally, and relax. It calms those neural signals. They enter a totally different brainwave state. And then they see the problem or situation from a calm light. It's not, because anxiety feeds on itself, feeds on itself. There are many cold, hot and cold images for many things. For example, it's also really good for infections or if a person um, breaks a bone. I have worked with people with a fracture and they imagine cold, cold, because the fracture, it's heat and it hurts. You know, there's a break, it's inflamed, and it actually sends signals and neural pathways of cold. You can literally change your body through images in the mind. The one that worked for me was a little more extreme. It was the guru sitting on the, literally sitting on the glacier or the ice, right? Okay, that's a, there's an image Go called ahead. the seated yogi. Yeah. And you see yourself as a yogi seated, seating naked uh -huh. in the Arctic. And your body is slowly, slowly emanating heat, emanating all the heat of all the agitation and tension and anger, whatever heats you up, anxiety. And they just get cool, cool, and people go, and they see it, their heat melting. Melting out of their body. Melting the, the ice, and they go, get so calm. The piece of work I like, and I think this could be helpful for people, is about suppressed anger and rage. Can you talk about that and how we can release that through the images as opposed right. to acting it out in our lives? Right. Okay, so depression is a function of suppression of anger and power. And of course, growing up, we are taught, don't get angry, don't talk back. Children should be heard and not seen. I mean, the millions of ways that we're silenced as children. If a child has a tantrum, which is a natural expression when it's total frustration at two years old, some parents don't understand. They make the child wrong or they don't can't tune into the needs. So um, the suppression of anger, which is taboo, is huge in terms of diminishing our true power and our truth because nature gives us anger like if you're going to do something a little nasty to me if I feel anger it's self-preservation coming out like no I'm not going to let you do that or someone wants to cheat me or someone wants to hurt me anger is a signal we get someone's going to hurt my child I'll feel angry but suppressed anger so when it's suppressed right. it'll come out in violence it'll come out in um, passive-aggressive behavior. It'll come out in ways that hurt people in our lives. It really creates bad energy. Or it'll depress us, which also impacts us physiologically and those around us being depressed. So there are images um, that help you release your anger and rage at the appropriate people who injured you. Because if you shut down the experience of anger where you've been hurt, you get depressed. But if you get, oh wow, that person hurt me and I'm really angry and I'm gonna see myself expressing that anger in the mind, in your mind. Right, so it's in your Inside, mind. Inside, you don't act out anything. You know, not like turn the other cheek or whatever you do not it's to feel expressed. the anger. So for example, you yeah. can see yourself um, 
having a tantrum or going after them. Or you can work with one of the things this work does, because you said body, mind, and spirit. Right. The spirit part of it, we bring, because we are part of spirit and we do have souls, and there's a spiritual part of us, that's a very important part of the healing. So we worked with many religious and also mystical and mythological images. So for example, there's one um, goddess in Hindu mythology called Kali. And she is part of the Holy Spirit, and she's Dark Mother Kali. And she uh, has a sword, and she has a skull of someone she beheaded, and she has a lay with the chopped heads hanging that she killed. Very non-Western. We go, ooh, you know, it's like a horror movie. And a belt around her hip with the limbs of people she killed. And the Hindus bless her. She's seen running in the open countryside, killing th those that come near her. So you see the people who have hurt you or injured you in your mind. And you see Kali running in the open countryside. She destroys everything. That's the, the Hindu myth of her. Until she's about to behead another head and she's about to behead the actual God representing the Holy Spirit, Shiva. And he's so pure that only purity will can snap her out of the rage because most people are mixed and they're evil and that she's beheading. So you see the people that have hurt you and you see Kali running after him and whatever she does, you can see yourself being Kali, it releases the anger, the rage. Then once it's released, there's peace and you can see it from a different perspective. You can open your heart, you can um, have more equanimity and the person comes out of depression because they've expressed it. So Very important. Rage is important. Yeah, absolutely. What are some of the most significant shifts that you've seen in people or, or conditions that have shifted? Okay, well for one, when I was talking about body-mind connection, uh, I saw, this is just brief because I didn't treat her, but Dr. Austin treated a woman who had multiple sclerosis. She wrote a book about it and how Multiple sclerosis happened when her she lived in an atmosphere of a lot of control, and it actually narrowed, tensing her body and created um, constriction in the myelin sheath. So through working with her, her multiple sclerosis went. What's her her name? name's Nancy Bent, and the book is Beyond MS. And she now started a whole graduate studies department at St. John's University on body, mind, psychology through the eidetic image. That's so so cool. it's really cool. So what I've worked on, many, many cases, but one was a woman who came in who was allergic to everything, allergic to wheat, allergic to sugar, so she couldn't have ketchup, she couldn't have this, she couldn't have that. She was allergic to soap suds, she was allergic to chlorine in a pool. When she traveled, she had to take boxes of food, special water, certain clothing. She was allergic to everything. So in working with, in fact, doing the intake, like how different foods affected her, I, I don't know, it was like unbelievable. It took me several hours to get through that. But to make a long story short, in the end, she got free of everything and she got really powerful. And wow. she came in because all the images, we found exactly where she had been suppressed. Allergies are definitely, Suppression of power and expression and some <gasps> trauma around some event and you get allergic to a substance near that situation. So, for example, a woman, another woman I work with, she was allergic to cantaloupes. And then it spreads, cantaloupes and then other fruit like cantaloupes. Weakness spreads in the psyche. But when you shift it to, spread, to strength, that spreads too. So with the cantaloupe, Something happened, her mother screamed and picked up a knife at her dad. I don't remember exactly, and she <gasps> she was a child, and there was a cantaloupe there, and it was like she got allergic to cantaloupes. And then it spreads to other fruits, and spreads to other things, and people get weaker and weaker. When you shift it to strength, what did she want to do in that moment with the when that happened? What was her expression? How did she want to take control? It's there in the mind, as the suppression happens, the expression, the power is always there, it just gets suppressed. We always have a natural response 
to anything that happens to us. There was a boy who they were going to institutionalize him. His OCD was so bad. And I said, just give this a chance. Completely healed. Completely wow. Completely healed. How long can one expect it's that so, to take? It's so unusual. I mean, that boy was a few months. That maybe quickly? six months. Because, yeah, the OCD started for him when his parents began fighting. You know, he was a really sensitive kid. He was 14. And he was sitting in front of the computer. And his parents started fighting, fighting violently. And then they, I mean, they weren't violent towards each other, but in energy. And they actually ended up divorcing. So he couldn't handle what was going on. He couldn't, it was so distressing to him and he was in so much pain about it that he started just wiping the side of the computer and just doing something with a line and then something else and then something else. So the energy of total fear and disintegration of his unity, which is in his parents, which was in himself. Split him. Split him and it went out into obsessive behavior that he could control. And I said weakness spreads, so it spread into everything. Then he couldn't walk through a door, and he couldn't, uh, he had to touch things, and he, then he couldn't go to school, and then he was in ha house all the time. It was horrible. So how did you bring him back to wholeness by him expressing what was suppressed? Again? Well, I had to test him to find right. out what the issues were, where right. the triggers were, because talking is not going to do it. No. You've got to go right to the imprints. And in fact, I tell people this is what's going on. They go, oh. They don't, you don't even know what's going on with you. Your images speak. I don't speak. The images speak. Um, so there was this, you know, I found the precise points. And yes, ex many images. There were many images used to bring him out. And specifically for OCD, cold imagery helps a lot to cool the brain down, to cool those, because the, the neurons go crazy with it. His father thanked me, went to college. It's just a great oh, what story. A it was really what a great. Story. That's so see, rewarding. Yeah, it must be so rewarding yeah. to see people shift. And again, I know, I mean, you hear people in talk therapy for a gazillion years and, and nothing happens. And then yeah. I know that they've worked with you and, and there are shifts. Yes. And everybody's there individual, are shifts. so there's no exact formula. That's the beauty of it, is that. There are many tools and techniques. It's like 40, I've been in this work 30 something years. There, I've learned so much. And you know, Dr. Austin put so much together that it's a whole body of work. So each person you test them, it's as unique as a fingerprint. And you find exactly the precise things. And, and like I said, it's like, the, and then the information comes from the person's psyche from the consciousness, and then you move this way or that way. But you're always looking for the gold, which is the real self, the strength, the power, the voice, the light, the radiance, the wholeness. The wholeness. It's there. So what would you like people to know, apart from buying your books and reading your article in, in Total Health in Total Magazine, Health Magazine yeah. which is monthly? It's, it was monthly, I'm doing it bi-monthly now, but it's on my website, all the articles, if okay. people want to read it. Um, what do you recommend to people that don't have sessions with you? I know you do Skype sessions with people around the world, mm -hmm. but people that can't afford it, or what, what do you recommend for people to do that are in distress if they can't have sessions with you? Well, there's always people who do this treatment at different prices based on their experience, so that's one thing. Um, and there's ways to work it out, but, and also through reading the books and reading other books that were written about eidetics, like one of my colleagues wrote a book on addiction, eidetics and addiction. There are many experiences, image examples that a person can take themselves through to find the wholeness within them. You know, I want to say that we are part of nature. We're not separate from it. And just this nature has been polluted and desecrated, so have we. And all of us, everyone on this earth has suffered, and we all are polluted with our history, sitting on top of our nature, our true nature, which is spiritual, which is deep, which is profound, which is sacred, and which has so many abilities and so many potentials and so much talent. 
So it's like we just need to clean up the pollution, the debris of our history. Literally. And it, literally. And it's not just our parents. It's what happened to them. So was your parent in the Depression? Did your parents suffer something terrible? Were they in the Holocaust? Did something happen to them? Because it's carried. It's, it's carried, carried through down. generations. Today I just worked with a woman who's Italian, and she had that inversion. And I had this feeling she had to free herself from the legacy of the, of the um, suppression of the feminine in that family. Right, which this is ancestral. It was ancestral, and she did. Down. She did, and, and she saw the working. pattern. Yeah, so you're freeing ancestral. And those images are in you, too, of your ancestor. It's all, this is amazing. Chemicals happen here, neurons, images, and history. And the other thing I love, and then we have to wrap it up, yeah. is you use a lot of um, nature images, which mm -hmm. I think, again, is so important. It's healing, very yeah, healing. it's so healing, and you work with a lot of the mythological images, yes. which is so great. So. There's just so much there to, to work with that you so draw much. upon. Yes, uh, there's a lot there to draw from. So whether it's about your mother and father or about a mythic image, a god, a Greek god or a Hindu god. or Big hot Greek god. <laughs> yeah, that always helps. <laughs> well, that'll help. <laughs> or um, nature, whatever tool is used, it is always to find the self, the, the true self of the person. And that's the most beautiful thing to watch, how when that comes out, the person's symptoms heal. It's so amazing. I thank you so much for your dedication you. to this work. Thank and you. And for helping so many people. Thank you. And, uh, thank you, Barbara. Yeah.